Please subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, IG, or YouTube. You can also listen to our podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, www.theempireradio.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Podcast. I'm Lewis. I'm Dr. Kent. Hey, our guest today is a former adult actress, best known for her beauty, uh, great scenes, and high energy. She's a 2020 uh, Urban X Hall of Famer, and we are excited. We want to welcome Sydney Capri to the Jack Moose Podcast. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you. And before we get started, we um uh, we want to wish you a happy belated birthday. Um, hope you thank enjoyed you. your day. I did. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, first we get started. Kind of tell us some background. Kind of like where are you from? I'm from Palm Springs, California. Palm Springs, California. Yes. Okay. A lot of I'm from Vegas because I. When I graduated high school, I moved out here. And um, so, yeah, a lot of people are like, aren't you from Vegas? I'm like, no, I'm from a small town called Palm Springs, California. <laughs> okay. I definitely heard it. We heard of that yeah. over here on the East Coast. So so can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing? Did you come from a, um, uh, do you have any siblings, uh, your parents? Um, you, did you come from a two-family household? So I'm the only child. Um I was ba- mainly raised by my mother, so if it, you know my father was around for a little while, but I was mainly raised by my mother. So she's a single parent, um, and it's just been me and my mom basically my whole life. What was your yeah. early like high school uh, life like? At, at, at what did it was high school pretty cool and and you? Um, so I, went, and... I moved around like uh, I moved around like from Palm Springs to Arizona, so. I used to live in a small town called Bullhead City, Arizona. And most of the people like I went, I grew up with, so say like from second to second grade to like third grade and such, um, I went to, I basically grew up with all with all these these kids from my from my elementary and everything. And then I left my sophomore year. Um, I moved to Palm Springs, back to Palm Springs. So I was kind of like, oh, this kind of sucks, like right in the middle of school. I want to graduate with my friends that I grew up with and everything. But I ended up moving back, um, so I was able to actually graduate with all my friends and stuff that I grew up with. So that was great. But I grew up in a very, very small town, um, mainly like it was um, Caucasian, Hispanic. There's probably about maybe 20 black kids at my school and everything. It was very interesting. (laughs) Um, And then, I mean, I graduated in 2003. And I got in the industry not too long after that. <laughs> so. We saw that in your background that you 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 um that you started really young into the industry. What's your did. now? Did you uh, before all of that? Did you? What's the first time you ever saw porn before? Um, first time was oh gosh, I don't know. I was super young. I was super young. Yeah. I was at the Cinemax soft soft core type stuff yeah and I used to always like it and I used to sit there and do my little thing I don't know if you know a little back history on that but I'm sure we'll yeah. get into it but yeah <laughs> kind of wait, you, you wait for the, the fizzle to go away <laughs> <laughs> yeah now you say you started now you say you started young so tell us that that transition from out of high school into the adult industry and how that occurred um, so, right. So this is my whole thing. So when I was in high school, um, I was practically like, I was a goody two shoes. I was one of those girls that, you know, rub against me and like, we were dry humping and if something seeps out, I'm going to get pregnant. And I was like, really <laughs> one of those. I'm one of the, I was like, um, I'm not giving head. That's disgusting. I thought it was hmm. disgusting. Like there was no way I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. I remember the first time I had ever did it. And the guy, you know, came around, I was like, I flipped out and ran to the bathroom and started crying. And he was like, what is wrong with this girl? So like, I was a really goody two shoes. All my my friends in high school, they were all sexually active. I was the only one that was not. And um, <clears throat> so I did learn how to make myself come at a young age, but I was not 
something that was sexually active or anything. So it was surprising that um, I lost my virginity when I was 17. And I graduated high school when I was 17. Wow. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So um, I shortly got into, I was 17 and then I was basically going on 18. And then I got into um, the, the industry when I was basically going on 19 years old. And it was been kind of really pretty much like I moved to Vegas and it was like, you know, everything was so different to me because I grew up in a small town. So I was naive to a lot of things. So I came out and I'm just like, um, you know, getting approached by a lot of different people and everything. And then I just ended up meeting this um, this agent out here and talk, started talking to her. And it was just something that interested me. And then one thing led to another. And I was just like, I was kind of shocked. <laughs> I was kind of shocked at myself because I always wanted to be like in the modeling industry and everything. So, and all my friends were like, oh, you should be, you should be a model, this and this and that. And so everyone was kind of like, this is the goody two shoes girl from, you know, she's now in the adult industry. Like, and no, <laughs> everyone was shocked. Like they could not believe it. And I really couldn't believe it either. Like I was, it was, it was um, very unexpected for me. <laughs> So did you um did you tell when did you tell your mom and what did yeah. you did she support you at that time or did you uh just do it my, and some you were told on that uh you, you know you were started in the industry? Oh, uh, you uh, you said my mother? Yes. When did you tell your mother or or uh, did she find out you didn't tell her and you were told no. on? No, I, me and my mom are really really close. We're like sisters, and being you know, I'm the only child and everything. We're really, really close, so I actually told her that on. Like, I mean, I did start off doing just a little bit of regular modeling and things, so like it, it did lead to that. But I told her I was doing that, and then um, I just ended up just kind of telling her, and she was just like, you know, as long as you're not hurting yourself or anyone else, she didn't really see any type of problem with it. Um, I remember her boyfriend was in one of the stores and he thought that she didn't know. So he like, um, like sits a picture of a DVD and was like, is this, is this so and so? And my mom's like, I already know about that. Like, she just didn't tell him. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything. She knew I was a smart girl and she just like, you know, Hey, as long as you're not doing anything to her, you or yourself, like, then, you know, she wasn't against it. And so he's telling, he's telling on himself in the flick store. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> That's why I was like, "Mom, really?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what? Now, how'd you get from? You said from Arizona to Vegas. What was the plan on go when you first went to Vegas? Um, I wasn't too sure. I was thinking like, "Oh, I want to go to college," but then I wasn't like a hundred percent sure if that's what I wanted to do. Um. So I did try going to a strip club and that wasn't really my cup of tea. I was kind of, I, I was so, like I said, I grew up in a small town. I wasn't into any of that. I remember I got on stage and I was like total stage fright. I didn't know what I was doing. And I think I lasted maybe a couple of weeks or something. And I'm like, this isn't for me. So, um, so yeah, I just, I was kind of lost. And then I got out here and I'm like, you know, um, you know, what is it that I really want to do? And I just started not liking it. I was like, I don't like it out here. And I ended up moving back to the Palm Springs area. So that's where it really started when I moved um, back out. I want to move back to Palm Springs. Um, when I, I met the agent out here, but that didn't work out. So it's like a really crazy story. It didn't work out. She ended up being a total psychopath. So that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. When I moved back to, um, to Palm Springs and actually pursued it and everything, I ended up meeting um, an older lady. And... Um, she was just like, oh, you know, like, you should really give it a try. And she basically helped me along with, like, Brian Pumper. I met him at a Sooners party randomly. And, like, he was a, yeah, you probably know all the spill about him. But <laughs> well, we're going to ask you about that because everybody has their own thing. You know? <laughs> hey, and from what I've seen in interviews, yeah, he's, he put a lot of people in. You know? Yeah, he has. I mean, he didn't necessarily really put me in, but he did have a lot of, you know, I just think that's when I really started going like a little bit full throttle. And then I got with my agency. And then over after that, it was over. <laughs> it was over. Like, I was like, wow, this is, it was crazy. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. So, so tell us, well, now you get connected with, with the agent out there. And how did it go about getting your first scene? Um, from what I remember, I think it was, we just, we did a girl, girl. I think it was like a girl, girl scene. 
um, at this hotel and it was um, with this old, I can't even remember. She was actually pretty well known in the industry, but it was an older white lady. And I was so nervous. I um, I had the wine glass and I'm like shaking because like I really like, it was, I just, it was, I was just so nervous. So I'm sitting here with the wine, I remember spilling it everywhere and all that. I think that was like really my first, first scene. And it was like really amateur. Like it wasn't nothing, you know, big like that. And then I think like um, my first, first scenes were, Oh gosh, um, I was just just so young. What was that company's name? Every time I see the pictures and stuff, I'm like, man, that it's just amazing to see yourself like you know that young and you know doing all that and and everything. But I think um, I think one of my my first scenes was I wasn't Bang Bros, but it's been so long I can't think of the the company's name. But I think that was my very first scene, though. It was a hotel room. That was my very first scene, you know, actually being recorded and all the whole full full thing. And then it just went from there. Now, did you feel, uh, now you said you were nervous. Now, did you have any regrets after they finished the, the video, everything? Oh, gosh, this is what I did. No, not with that. It wasn't really even that bad. Not with that. I think it was more when I really started working for the bigger companies and actually doing, you know, like, you know, being with the well-known um, male actors and the well-known girls, meeting a lot of the girls that are, that were veterans um, and everything. I think that's when it really set in doing my first anal scene. That, now that, that's some, that I have a few scenes that I stopped and was like, wow, I can't really believe I did that. You know, I do have some. You want to hear <laughs> <laughs> but yeah <clears throat> now you because when you first got into the industry you were mostly interracial if I'm not mistaken say that again now when you first got started in the industry you mostly were doing mostly interracial um yeah but... so how did that come about um initially um, it just kind of happened. I think um, that was just like, I don't, I always ask myself that too, because a lot of people were asking me like, how can we never see you any, in any scenes with, with black dudes? You're always with the white boys. And I'm like, I don't, I just, it, I don't know. I just kind of, it just happened like that. And then I think that was just like my agents doing. And then all of a sudden it went from that into, then I started working with everyone. So I it just happened. I don't think it was really anything behind it, but yeah, that's that's what it was. A lot of the companies, I think, back then in the beginning, they were doing a lot of interracial. It was mainly like they wanted to see the black girls with the white guys and all that, and then you got the people that they they're not doing any interracial and everything like that. So there was really no like you know it it just kind of happened. Now, was there any like anger, jealousy because you were doing interracial, like from other? actresses actors anybody slick talk no because it wasn't like my choice it wasn't i wasn't saying oh i'm not gonna work with them you know like it wasn't mine so no i didn't really get any any backlash or anything from it but um i just got asked a couple times you know by just fans or just people in general like oh well, why don't you you know why aren't you working with any uh, any black dudes they put you with the white dudes and i'm like I had no idea it really didn't dawn on me. And then all of a sudden I was working with everyone. So yeah, it wasn't a choice thing. I think that's mainly with the with the with the white girls and stuff. They be on the, oh, I don't do interracial and that sort of thing more so. Now was the pay different when you did interracial versus just the the uh black guys? Can you remember no. was well, not significantly? Not really. Um, not to me. I mean I think it's more so based on chemistry. Like it doesn't matter what, what black, white, anyone. It's more of like the chemistry you have on camera. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that's like you know the difference. I mean, you may have someone that you guys just don't really. It's just like okay, let's do this. We got to put on you know our game face and like make the best of this, and you would never know. And then there's people that you work with that are just like it's just a natural. You have the chemistry. You can just it's it. No, there's no let's stop and cut and do this over or telling you you just have natural chemistry and then it just turns out to be a great scene. So yeah. Well, what would you say is the biggest difference from doing an interracial set um and you know doing a set that's predominantly, you know, black? Hmm. Is it like, you know, a Hennessy and two blunts? And and, <laughs> catered, <laughs> and catered, they got a whole catered spread over there and this <laughs> Sometimes it's like that, but it can go both ways too. <laughs> it's like, uh, 
you walk into like it's a low key house party sometimes on the <laughs> thing, you know. They I mean it, it is like that sometimes, and I'll be like, oh my goodness, but I'm not not nothing really sort of. They may have a little more um little more of a setup depending on you know what company it may be just a little more um little more of a, a of a setup and everything um or stuff but i mean i don't think there was really that big of a difference like that i mean because you would get on um in a, any type of set it could be basically the same thing or there's everyone is it's like everyone is on it it's a mixture of you know all races and nationalities so i never really you know noticed anything that was too much different <laughs> it's more so what company are you working for it's okay. the company it's not okay. about the people <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what now what um now coming into the industry did you have any like do's and don'ts or or what you wasn't going to do or as your career went on like hey I ain't, i'm not doing this um at first i really I really wasn't going to do like the girl girl thing, um, even though that was kind of one of my first scenes. But we didn't really have to interact that like that too much. Cause so, but I really wasn't. I really was kind of really. I don't know why, but I was really. Even though I've always been attracted to girls and, and everything, I would just have this thing about like I don't know if I could really like have sex with the girl camera. I remember working for. Um, I think it was it was for Alexander Devoe, and I remember, and I was like. Um, Dominico and someone else and I was just like what and I'm like I don't do girl girl like and he's like what how do you not do girl girl like you just and then I they had to kind of like talk me into it and everything and then um and then I was like you know okay like it wasn't too bad but I just had never really been with like girls like that in my life so it was a little bit different for me but and then of course when I started I did not do you know because I never did that in my personal life so that's something that I ended up it kind of happened pretty fast I'd say um but it was on my no list, like I'm not doing anal, you know, that was out. Um, but pretty much, I mean, everything else I, I was pretty open to. I've done bondage, I don't know if you've seen all my bondage stuff that I've done, but that was, you know, something I never thought I would do, but yeah. So did you have anybody that you would refuse to, did you, will not work with list? Male or female? Mm, I did even it, it eventually I had to work with them one time and then that's what that became and then you know you hear things sometimes so it automatically makes you be like well, I don't know if I want to work with them if you're telling me this but um I had to actually do a scene with the people and then I was like uh yeah this isn't gonna work mm. I, I don't know if you want me to name names but <laughs> 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 now uh now you were you were talking about earlier that I don't mind, but yeah. Well, go ahead, we'll mention something. Yeah, we we, we want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, after because you know, I know you guys said you were gonna get into it, but I'm like, um, after I ended up dating Brian, he eventually became went on my no list. He became a no, I'm not working with him because I tried it and it was just like everything was occurring on set. It was just it was it was to the point where the directors were dropping the camera, like, you're not going to do this on my set. And I was just like, you're messing up my scene. Like, you're messing up, like, everyone's, it was like, I think a three or four way. And I'm like, you're messing up everyone's money because you're a part of this and now you mess up the whole scene and we have to go and rebook all, all these people and everything. So it would get, it would just get bad. And I was just like, I can't work with him anymore. Like, it, it just was, it was a mess. And then um, I really wasn't a fan of Nathan Threat. Um, you guys familiar with him? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah? Okay. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a fan of really working with him, but it ended up, I think, like, he went on my no list, but I think, you know, he was cool people and stuff, but I mean, there's just some, just, you know, might be some little things that it's just like, you know, oops. yeah, just not. <laughs> All right, no, we, we can't let but, you. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> now, so, no, we can't bypass this. That You actually said you dated Brian Pumper? Yeah, I did. How long was yeah. how long did this go on? A uh, few months. It was a few months. It wasn't two two months. Quite a few months. And then I would get from the directors like they would be like, "Is something wrong with her?" Because they 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 were like, you know, he's cool and all that, but they're just like, you seem like a little sure, you know, little just. And they're like, you're dating him, and I was like, I thought he was gorgeous, and I mean, he was cool. I didn't know like you know all the little 
cookie stuff and all that. So I was just like, what's the big deal? Like, okay, whatever. And then when I started seeing all the stuff, I was like, no, this is, this isn't for me. I mean, he even met my mom. He met my mom. Let me tell you, let's tell this story. So he met my mother. We all went to dinner and he tells my mother at dinner that I, that I peed on him. And I'm like, why would you tell me, why would you tell my mother this? Like, why would you do that? Oh, man. Yeah, um, I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, you know, because people get so comfortable because they see, oh, you know, you're close with your mom. Your mom's super cool. Everyone always loves my mom. And I'm like, you don't tell someone's mother that, though. <laughs> like, come on. And I was just like, oh, goodness. Like, his his little fetishes, they were just a little too much for me. I was like, no, this is, yeah. Yeah, but we, we dated for quite a few months. And then um, he showed up at my hotel room and got in. I don't know, the front desk let him into my hotel room. He wasn't on He wasn't on my reservation or anything. He showed up to my hotel room. And then after that, I walked in. I'm like, what are you doing here? And after that, I was like, yeah, that's, it was crazy. It was really, really crazy. And he just was like setting up Halloween decorations in my hotel room. That's what it was. Yes. He was setting up. I'm like, what are you doing in here? And he's like, oh, I got these decorations and da da da. And I'm like, well, why are you here with them? It was crazy. And after that, I was like, it's a wrap. Done. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> now you, now, now you say he had crazy fetishes. They, the fetishes were worse than getting peed on. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I'm like. I'm like <laughs> yeah. Okay. For instance, um, he calls me and. Um, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, um, I'm running around doing laundry and stuff. And he was like, okay, so we're going to go, don't take a shower. And I'm like, I'm going to take a shower. I'm like sweaty. I've been running around. And he's like, no, don't take a shower. You're going to have the smell that I, that I've been looking for. And da -da -da. So just stay like that. And I'm like, no, you're telling me not to take a shower. Like I can see the foot fetish stuff. People, I don't, I don't mind the foot fetish thing. I mean, I think people that have nice feet, I think it's like, I think it's attractive, especially with a woman and she has pretty feet. I, so I might have my own little fetish to myself, but I mean, some of the stuff, it's not going to be all the time. Like, oh, let me smell your feet and grabbing the feet and doing all kinds of like putting them all on your face and just like smelling. I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little bit much, but you know, I can kind of deal with the foot fetish thing, but like telling me not to shower and then. Um, he, wanted, just, he, wanted that, oh, he wanted that all day love yeah, like, all you know, I'm not. I'm. I like my showers. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not about to be running around saying you for you, so you. It, yeah, I can have the smell you're looking for. No, that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, he's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, wow. So, out in the industry, did you? We did you ever date anybody else in the industry? No, okay. I didn't. Yeah, most everyone I've dated, they've been out out of the industry. Surprisingly, because that's an another thing people always ask me, like, how is it dating, or would you rather date someone inside of the industry versus like outside? Um, size I did, and I had a couple people that tried to date me. I had a couple crushes and all that, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't happen. <laughs> but now, now that we're talking about dating a little bit, can you tell us what dating is like being in the industry? Like even uh, outside the industry, is it difficult? Do you have no issues or? I still have, and I mean, I still am affiliated with, you know, a lot of adult stuff. So I still have issues to this day with the whole dating thing. It's it's very hard. I mean, um, my first boyfriend I had while I was in the industry was my first like real world boyfriend. He really didn't mind, but I think it was because he was kind of doing his own thing. And I was, I was young then, so. I was like my first boyfriend. I was always the girl that was like, you know, I liked being single. I had a great, when I was in the industry, I was living like, at, like in the, especially in the beginning, I was living like life. I didn't want any boyfriend. I didn't care. Like, oh, you don't, you're not going to mess with me because of the industry. I don't care. Like I have all these other, like it, it didn't bother me like that. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be in a relationship. So when I finally got into one, um, we were together for a long time too, like five years. And, um, he was pretty open to it, but like I said, I think he was doing his own thing on his on the side, so it really didn't matter. And then the mainly most of the men I've dated, they have met me, um, and like I said, even to this some in some sort of way affiliated with the industry. So it's like they already know. I mean, I had someone I dated that told me they followed me my whole career, so it was kind of, it was kind of creepy. But they were like, I just would, they were telling me that I would tell um, they would tell their friends they were like. Um, I'm going to meet her one day. And they were even their exes were like, if I were to cheat on you with anybody, it would be her. And it was just so funny. We ended up meeting and like, he's telling me these stories. He's like, I don't want to think you're, I'm a weirdo or anything. And I'm like, 
I'm like, no, it was just really fascinating. I was like, wow, but he was just telling me about all this stuff. And I'm like, well, damn, like, you know more. You're telling me stuff. You know more than I do about certain things. And then, you know, we ended up meeting and we just clicked. So it was like one of those things. It was it was kind of strange. But, um, but yeah, that happened. And then um, let's see. Um, yeah, mainly everyone I've dated, they've, they've known a little bit about what I've done. It wasn't like a secret. I'm not big on like whoever I'm going to date. I'm going to tell you because eventually you're going to find out. You're either going to be online no matter if I haven't done like a, a scene for like anyone mainstream. It doesn't it doesn't even matter. That stuff is social media and stuff. Like I'll meet people and then right off the bat they'll be like, can I get your social media? And I'm kind of like hesitant because I don't, I'm very upfront and I will tell them. But it's like, I'm not trying to tell you within the first like 30 minutes of us meeting, you go to my <laughs> social media. It's a given. You're going to see like, they're going to be like, well, who is Sydney Capri? Like, you know, I thought you like, so it's like, I have to, you know, be very upfront about it. Um, but it is difficult because everyone thinks they can handle that first, even though I don't do scenes anymore. And I still, um, you know, I do a lot of just like internet stuff and do a lot of, um, you know, content and everything and interact with my fans and stuff more. They, they do not care. It's still, it's still a big deal, even if it's like in my past, cause they know it's like always going to be there. So I do have, I get a lot of, I'm going through it right now. I get a lot of backlash from it, like from, from dating, but they'll be like, Oh, you know, I don't mind. I can handle it. I can handle it. And I'm like, okay. And then like, you know, little stuff will come around. I could be somewhere and someone will come up to me and be like, hey, um, aren't you sitting here pretty? Or whatever. And I'll be like, yeah. And then, you know, give like I'll take a picture. I'm very friendly. Take a picture and everything. They're like, oh, they're, they always think like, so you still like, you still want to live that life. You still want to be that girl. Girl, like it's not, it's not going to go away. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to, you have to respect it and trust me that, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not, I feel like I'm not, I mean, a big step to not doing scenes anymore. Like, I feel like that's a, a, a big thing. Of the little stuff I do, I don't feel like it should matter. Like, you know, everyone's doing, there's normal, regular people that are doing OnlyFans and recording. There's a husband and wives doing it. There's boyfriend and girlfriends. I mean, like, I've tried to convince my boyfriends to do this stuff and he is just totally against it. And I'm like, we could be making all this money together. Everybody wants to still see me you know, do do the, the whole the sex scenes and stuff and everything. And I'm just like, ah, oh, those days are over. But, and I'm over here convincing him, like, let's do it. And nope, not happening. It's not going to happen. So it's it's a little difficult. <laughs> so, it so is. Would, so would you do Definitely. it? So you would do like, say, your OnlyFans, but not show his face? Oh, I would do it. Yeah. And I told him, I'm like, you don't have to. I said, all I need is your face. I don't need your face. I just need that penis. I was like, you don't have to do nothing else. You don't even have to put your hands in there. Just give me the penis and we're good. But nope. I, I'm, I'm still trying to convince them. So <laughs> <laughs> I really, really am. But yeah, it is it is difficult. It is quite difficult. I feel like I would have to totally just... I mean, no man wants to share their woman with with other people. And I, and I understand that. So I always take that in. So I feel like, but if I'm about to get married, I probably would stop a lot of stuff. But then again, I look at a lot of girls, they are married and they're still doing it with their husbands and stuff. Or their husbands will allow them to do girl, girl or like solo stuff. And I feel like if no one's touching me and I can sit there and wrap my own vagina and make, what's wrong with that? You know, what's wrong? There should be, I don't feel like there, if no one is physically touching you, I don't feel like there should really be an issue, but it's not, it's not just being touched. It's like, they don't want, they're still, how, how do they put it? Um, I don't want to share my girl with the world. Like they're still being able to see you. So therefore they feel, you know, a certain way about it. And I, I just, I don't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> Problem. Cause I'm like, if you wanted to do it, I would let you do it. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Okay. right. Yeah. So. Well, let me ask you this question. Yeah. Now, you know the the difficulties in the dating. If we isolate dating, on, let's add all the difficulties or the cons with doing porn. If you could go back to the 18-year-old you or 17-year-old, would you tell yourself to keep to do it or not to, to go the path that you decided to take? Yeah. Everything that you know at this point in life. That's a good one. I almost want to say, because I've kind of asked myself this before, I probably want to would say probably not to do it for, like, several different reasons. Um, Tell us what those reasons are, too. Um, for one, I felt like I started a little bit young. I wish I would have started maybe when I was, like, in my mid-20s, like, maybe about 25, 26 or something like that. I think, I think it, and then, you know, 
back then we didn't have social media like that. Remember it was like MySpace and stuff and it wasn't as much promotion and all that as there is now. Yeah. So that's one thing that drives me crazy to this day. I'm like, I wish back when I was in there, we had, you know, Instagram and everything else, all the other social media platforms. I feel like if we had that, um, it, things probably would have been a lot different. And I mean, who knows? I may have like not just abruptly just stopped, um, stopped doing it. And then I feel like the English teacher, that was like my best subject, always maintain like A's all through, all through school. I was really into English and reading and writing and all of that. So I feel like if I wouldn't have got in, I probably just would have went to college and became like an English teacher or who else, um, or, you know, God knows what else. Um, so yeah, that's probably my two biggest, biggest reasons of, um, of maybe not, um, I would have tried something else. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't have any regrets though. I don't, I don't have any regrets. I mean, I made a name and I'm still able to make money off my name after all these years, you know, they say that. You, us black girls don't have that long of longe uh, longevity in the industry, but I don't think that that is true. Um, and I mean, I've lived it. I definitely don't think that is true because I mean, I've been, it, I'm, I've been in the industry over 15 years, and I'm still able to make money off my name. So I really don't feel like um, that is the case. But so yeah. So you were an, uh, uh, an active performer. You said from 03, 04 to to what? It was like 04. Oh four, I think. Let's see. Um, so I had two thousand fifteen, probably like um, two thousand. I mean, I was still doing a lot of fetish stuff. Probably the last three years. So I had my twins. You know, I have twin boys. I had my twins in two thousand fifteen, but I had already basically um, retired, like a year, a few years before that. So probably like three years before that. So it was probably like 2012 or so, between 2010 and 2012. But I was still doing a lot of fetish work for um, this company that's out in Vegas then. So I was doing that for, for a while. But I think I totally probably retired from doing like scenes for major companies probably in like 2010 or so. Yeah. Was it the progression of, of, of motherhood that kind of, you know, kind of stopped the no because like I said I stopped I didn't even know when I when I ended up having my I didn't even that wasn't even planned it just happened so a lot of people will think that they'll be like oh did you and I'm like no I I retired way before um I even okay. yeah before I got pregnant or anything I remember uh, um yeah I I yeah it was way before so people always think that but I'm like no Nope, nope. It was a few years before. I was just still doing like little stuff here and there, maybe a scene for this company, but it was mainly just fetish stuff. That was the way I like, I like my little fetish work. Like to this day, I still do, I'll do like, I'll do fetish things in a heartbeat before I actually do like a regular scene or anything. But yeah, people are really into fetishes. <laughs> so, but what made you retire? Did you just get tired of it? Or I mean, what was the reasons that, that, that you, 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 um, you know? Everything just kind of started changing. And then um, I was, uh, just the industry started changing in itself. A lot of companies were um, were closing. The industry just started changing. Like everyone tells me, and I, I always say it, I feel like when I was in, it was like the golden era. It was like when it was just like me, Jada, Carmen Hayes, Monet Devine, Jasmine Cashmere, all of the like, beauty um, Ayana Angel was still in. I mean, I remember meeting like all all of them at an industry party. It was like, you know, wow, like I hear all these great stuff about these girls and then now I'm meeting them and everything. But that was like the golden era. And a lot of them had already been around before that. But I felt like when it was, you know, the, around that time, um, the early 2000s, like that was the golden era. Because a lot of people now, they even tell me, they're like, man, when all you guys were around, everything was great. And that's when bodies were natural. Um, and everything was more natural. Everyone was getting boob jobs and everything. It wasn't about getting your whole body done or the big, the, the big old boob butt, butts. I'm like, I sit here and I'm like, I had the natural booty, like, and they thought it was big then. And I'm like, oh, that thing when I first started, I'm like, now, and I'm like, now I had the butt that all these girls are, you know, paying for and stuff. And I'm like, it was just so different. So as time progressed, it's just like a lot of things started changing. And I just was like, you know, like, you know, the pay, the pay started changing. A lot of the stuff was going to internet. That's why a lot of the company, they were, every, all the companies were changing. They were going down on the pay rates. Um, 
And I just was like, it was just kind of getting into the new girls were starting to come in and um, it just kind of just started changing this all the way around. And I was like, oh, I think it's just time for something different. And, you know, I always knew I was going to still be affiliated, but I just kind of was like, well, I'm overperforming for companies. So then it starts making you think like, we don't get residuals. A lot of people tell me like, you're making like $5,000, $10,000 a scene. I'm like, no, honey, it doesn't work like that. We get, unless you're a contract with a company, you get paid that one time and then, you know, that's it. So it was just like, you know, when you start thinking about these companies that are making all this money off this one scene you did and everything else, it kind of makes you kind of think like, you know, let me just start doing stuff for myself and, you know, not just keep you putting this money in these people's pockets just to do this, you know, few scenes. And then it's like, it's over and done with. So when they started going lower on the pay and everything started changing, I was like, yeah. yeah. Now, if you, if you go back through um, all your films and that you've done, which one would you say, like, if you had to put a stamp on it, like, this is Sydney Capri. If you had to show them, like, this is this is this is how you do it. Which one would it be, or your favorite scene? Which one would you say? My favorite scene is Black Girls Get Nasty Too with Justin Slayer. He was like one of my favorite performers to work with, and it was just like a natural. Like, I thought he was just like so fine. And we just had this great natural chemistry and it was, it was great. And uh, a lot of people really enjoyed that scene. Like when I saw them, they're like, yeah, that's one of my favorites. Like you were just so young and just like, you were just so like innocent because it was one of my first scenes. So they were like, you just had this innocence, but it was like a natural, like it was a cute, natural, um, you know, just great, like, you know, cute little energy and stuff. That's one of my favorite scenes. That's definitely one of my favorite scenes. Mm -hmm. Now, have have you ever, has there ever been any fights or anything like that on scenes? Any things that you can talk about? Oh, no. No, I can't really recall any type of fights like that. I mean, you'll get people that, um, sometimes you'll get on set and there'll be people that are, um, that are, you know, sitting there watching. It'll be an open set kind of like that and you'll have I remember a few going on where like the girls are didn't want all the people on the set and things and something like that but it was really it, you know they handle their way or not which I mean I kind of respect it but you know if you're you kind of you're sometimes when you're on set and you've got the camera in front of you there's five ten people in the room and they not sitting there trying to watch the scene they actually have to be there for the lighting or this and that or maybe we were worse to shooting in like a um like a um, what is it called? like a loft or something like that? So it's very open, so you can still see what's going on. So that type of stuff, I'm like, you know, if you if you can deal with the whole camera and you're all up in your face while you're doing the deed, you shouldn't really be concerned about all these other people on set. But I can, you know, I was like, oh, I can understand it, but I don't really recall any crazy type of commotion. Um, I almost got into a little scuffle before because Nat Turner, um, he he, we were doing the ending of the scene and he came all in my eyes and mm -hmm. I had my and I flipped out because it was like burning it was burning mm -hmm. and I'm like oh my god and I was crying I flipped out and he felt so bad and it was one of our it was it was our first time working together at that and then um so it was our first time working together and then that happened and I was looking so forward to it because and every everybody else was too because they were like you know he was really attractive they're like you know you guys just go together and I was and I was excited to work with them so I was all excited like ooh he this man sexy Da, da, da. And then that ends up happening at the end. It kind of just made me be like, well, damn, but we got past it. He apologized. <laughs> I got out of my boohoo stage and all that. And we did many, many scenes after that. So it was like, okay. But yeah, nothing too crazy that I can re recall. Nothing too crazy. <laughs> now, not including yourself, who would you say, if you gave three names, three people that, um, as far as female actresses that you you know, would put up on your top three. Not including yourself. Top three. Not including me. Um do, 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 do. I would say Jada Fire, um, Jasmine Cashmere. We've done some great things together. She's a good one. Um, and hmm. I don't know for the third. Um I used to, well, you know what? I mean, I don't, I love Diana Angel. She's always a sweetheart. Diana Angel. Mm -hmm. I would say, I guess that's going to be my top three. <laughs> now, when you, when you started, 
was there like a um you know a mentor someone that kind of like took you under, took you under the wing under her wing or said come here little girl let me tell you something you know or gave you some advice mm -hmm. that you remember you know Diana DeVoe mm -hmm. yeah Diana DeVoe she was she was pretty awesome she because you know she performed before she became a director she was a um performer so she yeah she was she had a little impact on me, gave me good advice. Like, you know, it isn't, it's not going to last forever. Stuff will die down. Make sure you save your money. Make sure, you know, you do this. She always gave me really good advice. She was, she was really good. So can you tell us your, uh, your three top male talents you, you enjoyed working with? Um, yeah. Uh, Justin Slayer, Nat Turner, and, hmm. Oh, who else? Mm, I would say Lex. I like Jeff and Joy work for Lex and still. Yeah. Now, <laughs> if you if you had to pick, I want to do mainstream actors and actresses and adult. If you had to pick your, um, I guess, a fantasy threesome, who would you pick? They can be male, oh. female. I want you to do mainstream actors and actresses or or musicians and in adult industry. Hmm. Well, I, I, it used to be T.I., but I don't know anymore. I always had this thing for T.I., and I said if I would meet him, if I met him, I was going to go crazy. And then I finally met him, and he was just so cool. But, um, yep. but I don't know if I really have that. <laughs> or but that that's one of my big crushes. Um hmm. oh gosh, that's a good question. I really think about that. I know I'm always like, oh, he's so sexy. I'm like trying to think of so oh, you know who I love? The guy from Good Girls. Um, I don't know what his name is though. Oh my god, what is that man's name? Do you guys watch? Are you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Watch that oh goodness! I cannot think of his name. It's at the tip of my tongue, but I have the biggest crush on him. Um, it's the main guy in the show called Good Girls. Okay. But if not, I mean, I think um, Quincy. You know who Quincy is? Um, well, it's um, P Diddy's ex-wife's son. Okay, I'm sure you're familiar. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, but, I mean, I think that, but I don't mean so. A threesome with like, I mean, with two guys. Gosh. You can pick who you want to be, you know. Oh no. Um maybe I don't know. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot about my girl um Ariana Starr. She probably would have been in my top three too. But yeah, maybe like Ariana Starr and nice a nice a chocolate man. But um, but yeah, maybe I don't I don't know. That's a good question. Because <laughs> I always sit there and try to analyze it. It's like, hmm, let me go down the list. I'll start looking at movies and stuff. Like, I'm like I don't know why I can't think about my little juicy crushes right now. But I bet you, I'll be, I'll sit there later on tonight and be like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I, I heard someone on the. It was uh, I can't. Remember, it was another adult actress said on the, on an interview one time. She said, now this is what she said, that she feels it's safer sexually as far as in the industry than in in the real world because there are std testing as far as you know do, do you yeah. feel the same way i do i do um i really really do because of that it is that's very very true and that's like a big thing with me like ever since being in the industry and always getting tested every month like that's something i always continue to do and i love it when People will be like inquiring about stuff and they'll be like, oh, well, well do you have any STDs or been tested? And I'm sitting over here like, I should be asking you this. Like, you, it's not like you're in the industry or anything. You're this random person. That's going, like, really? Like, I should be, that's how I feel. I kind of take offense by it because they'll think, they'll be like, well, you've done a lot of stuff. And I'm like, uh, but I've been, we have, we're not just doing this. We have, we get tested to do this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I get kind of offended by that when people like ask me because I'm looking like I'm like when's the last time you've been tested like what you know and then oh I got this oh I've been you know and I'm just like yeah like you know mm -hmm. I definitely feel that I always especially when I was actually in the industry I was really really big on that like mm -hmm. I'd rather deal with someone like you know mess with somebody that was in the industry that I've done scenes with and just meet someone randomly and 
and do it. So I totally agree. <laughs> they, they, they hit you with it. You know I'm good. You know? <laughs> yeah. Nah, no, show me those good papers then. Let's see the, the good papers. Like, oh my goodness. And then the way things are nowadays, it kind of keeps you out because like people can go and make up like fake stuff. And I mean, that that's actually happened in the industry with some, mm-hmm. with, I'm sure I mean, seen it in the media, but people go and try to make fake tests and stuff. So you really have to be, have to be like, it's scary. <laughs> I mean, if you had to say how many, what percentage of scenes or, or if any, did you use, was there you condom use on? Oh, Probably there was really, you don't really ever do, there's a scene without, without harm. I mean, that, I've done some, I mean, there were companies, um, especially like international ones. And I think, um, who was it? Was it Bang Bros or Vivid? I think some of them, they used to have like the condom scenes and stuff like that. So I probably did maybe a handful or so of those, a handful or so, but yeah, mainly, you no, know, I said, have to be tested, has to be raw. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. You got to pick either or to say either, one or the other. All right. Okay. Spit or swallow? <laughs> um, Swallow. Long or thick? Thick. All right. Um, Lexington, Steel or Justin Slayer? Justin Slayer. Okay. <laughs> um, Jada Fire or Jasmine Cashman? Uh, Jasmine Cashmere. Gotcha. Mainstream or the content creation, OnlyFans? Um, content content creation. Okay. Do you consider um, people who make content creation as, as they, if they label themselves a porn star? <laughs> no, I feel like it depends on how long you've been doing it. I mean, if if they're being, they can make it to that, to that thing, but you can't just start something. And then that, that's always been a big pet peeve of mine with people get, get in the industry and they've done like five scenes or they just started this, this only fans and like, you have to make a name for yourself and all that. I feel like there's a lot that comes down to be able to, that comes down to be able to label yourself with the whole porn star name. You just can't do a few scenes and then call yourself, oh, I'm a porn star. Or like, or just start you know, some content and be on social media and have a ton of followers and all of a sudden you're a porn star. Like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think that. I don't believe that. Gotcha. <laughs> no. I'm gonna get you to fill in a couple things for me. Okay. Sex is better with? Foreplay. My greatest moment in life. Ooh, having my twins. Mm-hmm. If you could have dinner with one person, who would it be? You said I could, if I could have dinner, dinner with one person? Anybody. Dead or alive. Anybody. Um, hmm. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. Michael Jackson. That would be cool. If you could do something over, what would it be? Um, something over. It would probably be uh, me getting into the industry. Like I said, be getting in so young. Gotcha. I would have done it when I was a little bit older. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> well, Miss Well, Miss Cindy Capri, that we surely appreciate you coming on our podcast and doing this interview with us. Um, before we go, is there anything you want to tell us about? Some of your social media handles, or anything you want to talk about, promote, or um, things you got going on? Well, um, you can follow me on Instagram, which is the Real Sydney Capri. Um, that's mainly my my main source of social media that I use. I'm just getting back into to Twitter. I probably can't even tell you my handle name because I just restarted it. Um, my OnlyFans will be back up. I just took it down because everyone's been asking me, what happens to your OnlyFans? And I'm like, mm-hmm. on there, um, since I was trying to figure out if I was what kind of content I was doing, I do a lot of fetish stuff now. So OnlyFans won't let you put use that platform for a lot of the fetish. So I just 
um, came across different um, different platforms to start putting my fetish work on. So soon I'll have that going, so you can be on the lookout for that. Um, so yeah. Gotcha. Well, hey, well, we thank you again. Um, continue to follow Miss Sydney Capri at all her social media uh, platforms and handles. And we want to just continue to thank you again. And we wish you all the best and, and taking out of your time to do our podcast. We truly appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Please subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, IG, or YouTube. You can also listen to our podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, www.theempireradio.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts.